Would you like to be able to reduce your road freight costs? There's a number of traps that you can fall into, and one of them I'm going to highlight this week, coming right up. So unless you're very experienced in negotiating freight contracts, there's a few quite simple traps that you could fall into, and I'm gonna share one of those this week. So I'm kind of lifting the lid on what a lot of our transport consultants do here at Logistics Bureau. Um, this one, I'm surprised that a lot of people don't quite fully appreciate. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna show you a couple of charts. So first of all, when you're entering into any sort of freight negotiation, and we're talking about road freight here specifically, you need to understand your freight profile. So here we are, we're having a look at a chart here. It's got annual tons by weight break. And typically what will happen is a road transport operator will offer you different rates depending on the size of the consignment that you're sending. So here, for example, we're seeing we've got uh, its weight breaks by ton. So it's you know, up to half a ton, between half a ton and three tons, three to five, five to 10, and so on. And why is that? Well, there are obviously operational efficiencies. The larger the load, the larger the consignment that the carrier is transporting for you. Uh, if there's a, you know, a few cartons or a pallet, um, there's, there's a certain amount of work involved in that. If it's a full truckload, the cost per unit you would expect to be less because overall it's much more efficient your consignments filling the truck, for example. So along the bottom of this chart, we can see the various weight breaks, and this is just an example. Um, we're going up to 18 tons, and then a semi, a semi-trailer, uh, and then a B-double, which is a particularly Australian thing. It's like a, a semi-trailer doubled. <laughs> Maybe I'll actually go through the size of trucks at, at some stage in a later video, uh, but it carries a lot more than a normal semi-trailer. So what we're looking at here, if we look at the upright, the y-axis, is the number of tons that are carried per year in those different weight breaks. So we can see, for example, between five and 10 tons, those consignments that fall somewhere between five and 10 tons, make up the sort of largest component, don't they? There's over 2,000 tons a year shifting in that weight break. So you need to understand this when you're getting into freight negotiations because you want a particularly good rate, if you can, for that weight break. You're not so concerned, for example, down at the other end of the scale for the B-double loads because you don't move many. Uh, and likewise, at the sort of half ton load, you're not moving a lot there. But most of your transport spend is gonna be in this five to 10 ton weight break. So you wanna have a good rate for that. Now, next chart, let's have a look. So what generally happens with road freight operators, tell me down below if it doesn't happen in your country, uh, they offer you discounts on the sort of published rate depending on the size of consignments, the size of loads that you're sending. So for example, um, sorry, this is maybe not too clear along the bottom there. Uh, this is actually in kilos, I think. Yeah, it says weight break by tons, but it's really in kilos. So we've got up to a ton, three tons, five tons, 10 tons, 18 tons, semi-trailer and B-double again. So we would expect a larger discount off the sort of published rate, if you like, um, the larger the load that we're sending. And this is just an example again, but it's typically how that discount might operate. So, you know, if you're gonna be sending one ton loads, we'll give you 7% off the rate. And so it builds up and it's fairly linear. Uh, there's some logic to it. Um, and that would be a logical discount profile. Very often what happens though, is that the freight operator will want to understand your freight profile because they want to know what's the most common weight break that you'll be using. They'll be wanting to know which freight lanes are your most commonly used. And they're going to approach the pricing for your freight in a number of different ways. Let's just go back to that earlier slide so we can see the five to 10 ton weight break is the most common one. One thing a freight operator might do is to say, oh, we see your most common weight break is in this five to 10, we'll give a really good price on that one. Does that happen a lot? Uh, maybe not. Uh, another thing that might happen is that 
when they understand your throat profile, they'll see, oh, they're not moving a lot in the half ton weight break. We'll give you a really good price on the half ton and an even better rate on the B double up at the other end. So they, you know, <laughs> make, a, make a show of looking after you. But maybe uh, that most common weight break for you is not a particularly good price. Um, another way that they might approach this is to have a look at the various volumes on the different lanes of their transport operation. Um, so I'm here in Australia, they might look at the, you know, the Sydney Melbourne legs, the, the Sydney Brisbane legs, the Sydney Perth legs or whatever. Um, and depending on the volume of freight moving on those particular lanes, they may offer you a really good rate on one of those lanes just to build up the volume on that lane. And, and they kind of cross subsidize a little bit sometimes between lanes. So that's, that's a third way they may approach it. The fourth way, if they're a bit lazy, they'll probably look at your freight profile, your freight spend, and pull out a quote from a similar company that they've recently quoted for with a similar sort of profile and spend. That's a bit of a lazy option and, and hopefully that doesn't work too much. But the key point that I want to make here is that as you're going into these freight negotiations, you need to understand your volumes across the different weight breaks and across the different lanes. Because if you don't understand that, you're going into your freight negotiation not as well equipped as you could be, and you can bet that the freight company will do all they can to find out this information. Um, and they're gonna use that to try and maximize you know, the profit on the contract. Hey, you know, they're in a commercial operation, can't blame them, they're, they're out to make a profit and they, they really wanna understand your freight profile so that they can try to make that contract as profitable as possible. The more you understand, the stronger position you are in negotiating. So let's have a look at this discount chart. So if we were going to do it logically and say, you know, the bigger the consignments that you're sending with us, we can discount the freight rate a little bit. That's kind of what it's going to look like. You may not see that very often, though. More often, you see something like this. So here on the left, we've got from that typical chart, for example, at the 10 ton weight break, we're seeing a 27% discount off the normal rate. What you might see in the quote that you get on the right here, we're seeing it's about 14%. So remember, if, if they truly understand your freight profile, they may not be giving you the best rates on where you're most likely to be spending your cash. So the, the weight break that makes up most of the consignments, they're going to give you discounts in areas maybe that you're not going to use so much. So I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen every time, but it's something to look out for. It's a bit of a negotiation tactic. So there you go. Very quick video this week. I hope it made sense. If it didn't, do a comment down below. Um, if you have seen very different sorts of things happening in your country, do comment down below. It'd be interesting to get a bit of a debate going on the topic. But the key for this video is understand your freight profile, the different weight breaks, the different consignment sizes, and how much volume you're sending in each of those weight breaks on which transport lanes, which sort of A, B pairs in the transport legs. And then un uh, equipped with that, you can make sure that you're getting a really good rate for you know, the highest volume weight breaks. It's as simple as that, but not a lot of people do it, sadly. So hopefully that was helpful. If you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing. Just hit that subscribe button. And if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time we have a new video coming out. They come out every week, generally on a Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and thank you for watching. And I'll see you next week. Bye for now.